Hello, W1RCP, Rob here. And this is a circuit that even when I was a technician some 12 or 13 years ago, and I didn't even know Morse code yet, this particular circuit intrigued me. This is the Pixie, and I think this one is specifically the Pixie 2, but most of them, when you see them, they'll just be marketed as a Pixie. And I purchased this one off of eBay. It was the square kind. I had one that fit in a nice plexiglass or acrylic box. I lost one of the edges to it and this one burned up in a big accident. I had set the key on it. It was plugged in and no antenna. And I had come back and my whole vehicle smelled like burning. So I had let the smoke out of that one. This square PCB does not fit in that. So I think what I'm gonna do is like I did with this one. This is the 80 meter version. I, I've never actually made a contact on this one. I made one on the other one to a guy that's three miles in town. His call sign at the time was Kilo Oscar 4, November Lima Kilo, which is really close to my friend Eddie's, which is November Lava Lava. And so Billy contacted me on that one. It was my first and only contact on it in many years. But QRP with another P seems to be a pretty big deal these days. Uh, everybody's seeing how low can you go when they do parks on the air. So this is one, it's a little bit different. I designed it with a different filter, and that's what this big old thing sticking up the Altoids can is. And I have it resting against a piece of crappy electrical tape that needs probably some more put on top of it because I can see it starting to bust through now. But I want to make another 40 meter version. I want to try this 80 meter one out though. So the next time that I go camping long term i'm gonna try this bad boy out so i think i can make another one in an altoids can i think i have another connector like this bnc that's a panel mount and i just used a power connector barrel connector and uh i think i have another one of these hiding in the garage somewhere so i may do the same thing and then use my Elecraft power supply at 11.1 .1 volts right there so then we have key we have headphones that's my best depiction of headphones right there the circuit is fairly simple and it comes with most of these parts the one thing that i am going to change out is where the crystal goes in i'm not going to put the crystal in it comes with a 7.023 that's an extra band the Pixie that I built first, which is similar to this hunk of junk right here. I don't even, I think the crystal sat right here and you can see I've already robbed the parts of that, but I made it where you could change the crystal out. I had made my own circuit board and everything for this one and I never made contact with it, but I tried, I tried. I didn't, I, it's just, it's different. The receiver on this one is way different. You hear CW for kilohertz and kilohertz wide. I've done CW enough, I think I can figure it out. But what we're gonna do is put this thing together. So like I was saying, this is the only change is I robbed these off of the old one. I'm gonna put those on this new one where the crystal goes so I can switch it out. 7.030, I think, or 035 was one. It, it, there was one that was in the technician band and that's why I had purchased that one back in the day because I was just a technician and I was gonna get on CW. The crystal that I'm going to use on this one probably primarily is a 7.122 megahertz. I have a 7.100. I have quite a few that I've purchased off of eBay. You can get a whole kit of 40 meter crystals for just a couple of dollars. So I'll put that back over there so I can lose it later. <laughs> And the other thing that I like to do is I like to go ahead and organize all of my parts with the parts list. I just so happen to have two of these 
because I had two kits. So like that one, I think I did a, a sheet of paper and wrote all this down so I didn't ruin the sheet. And then I wound up getting another one like this a couple years ago. And this has been in my closet for years. So I found it, I took it out and said, you know what, let's put one together on a video. So I organized all of the resistors and I have to use a multimeter to own these out because me being fully colorblind, I cannot see the colors. There's just not even enough to make a guess. And these guys, I actually did kind of look at the colors and then I also compared it to the one that I cooked. So I'm gonna use it to orient these inductors in the right place so they do their job as intended. And the numbers on these were really tiny. And actually the worst ones were the 473s, the 0 .047 microfarad ceramic capacitors were difficult. So I have everything organized. I have the diodes organized, although it's pretty obvious which ones are which. For the one in 4,000 ones are these guys. And then this guy's a little teeny tiny signal diode. And then you have two transistors. Okay, so normally when you put one of these kits together, you start with the things that are really short first. So we're gonna start with the resistors. This is the blown up version of this particular circuit. And so we're gonna try to find, and I probably should have done this beforehand, but we're gonna find all of the resistors starting with resistor one. So it's, it's a uh, Where's Waldo of resistors right now. We're gonna start with resistor one is right here. And that is resistor one. So the way that you put the resistors on this particular circuit board is in the normal realm, you would take and bend both legs and then sit them in that way. But because this circuit board is so tight that you leave one of the legs straight and then you bend the other one over like this. And then you place that down into where it goes. So this is resistor one is a 47K ohm resistor. And so we're gonna push that down in there. And what I like to do is pretty much do all of them at once. So I take and I bend the legs out to keep it from falling through so that when I turn it to solder it, which I also don't have a helping hands anymore. I lost that many years ago along with all the gator clips that were on it that came unscrewed. So we're gonna go look for resistor two now. It should be in this area somewhere. I would think there it is. Resistor two goes up right next to, you gotta keep this thing oriented. I didn't, I, I, I let it get out of orientation. Here we go, resistor two is right here. So that is the 33K ohm resistor. Same deal, we're gonna take it and bend it over just like that so that it fits neatly on this very tiny postage stamp of a circuit board. Gonna put that in place right there. We're gonna bend the legs backwards, the leads, so that they don't move. And now let's go to resistor three is a 1K ohm resistor. I saw resistor three just a moment ago. So we're gonna bend the legs over like that. And resistor three, and they even put a big circle. I think the big circles where they want you to, or suggest, Yep, make sure you put them in the right holes. That's the other thing. Resistor three runs this way. I almost put it in the signal diode hole, I think. All right, so dragging those left and right. Resistor four is a 470 ohm resistor. And let's see if we can find resistor four. We're gonna bend that over. Resistor three was right there, so let's go over, there's resistor five, so it's gotta be somewhere in between, right? Okay, that one's a little bit more difficult to find if you found it yet. Resistor four, where are you? So we had one, two, three. Okay, this one's a tough one. There's five. I may have to come back to this one after I find it. Have you found it yet? Yeah, I don't see resistor four anywhere. 
jumper, and we have capacitor, L2, C2, C5, R5, R7, L3, Q1, D2, R6, R3. Okay, well I cannot find resistor four, so I'm gonna have to put that one back for a minute and go to resistor. Oh, guess what? Just found it, just found it. So I'm assuming resistor four is this right here. So if we look in between the two capacitors, we see resistor four right there. So that took a minute. Waldo almost got away from us. So we're gonna take and bend these leads to hold that in place. All right, there we go. Okay, resistor five is a 10K ohm. And here's what's cool about resistors if you're new to electronics is they have no polarity. It doesn't matter what direction a resistor goes in, they all work the same in either direction. So resistor five should be pretty easy because I just saw it. It's gonna be up in this corner right here. That's not really a, I guess, what is that quadrant, quadrant one of the uh, graph there? Okay, bending that, we're almost through. We got two more. Resistor six is a 100K ohm resistor. It's one of the biggest resistors in this whole thing. This is resistor six. Saw that one hiding somewhere off in the distance over here. Resistor six is right here. And they give you some pretty nice little vias on this thing. They, they, they're, they're, they're quite large in comparison to the resistors for sure. There's plenty of room. You could probably fit two of them in there. And resistor seven is a 10 ohm resistor. And resistor seven goes over here by capacitor 11, just above the LM386. So here we go. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is solder all of these in carefully. So here's how that's gonna work. <clears throat> in my soldering days of learning how to solder, long time ago, back in 2007 or 2008, I soldered as a kid, but then I got serious about doing electronics kits back in 2007 and 2008. One of the things you don't want to do is put it directly on top and then try to flow your solder down. That'll most likely result in a cold solder joint. So what I really like to do, first thing is you tin the tip and I try to get it heated from one side and push the solder from the other so you heat the pad and the lead at the same time and it and, and try to push it onto the lead so on these tiny little pads that's a little more difficult to do because the tip of my solder takes up all of the available surface area so there's one soldered in place and you can see that i'm pushing this trying to push it from the back side. I just cleaned my tip so my solder went off. And then I try to drag the solder up the lead to make sure that the lead was fully heated. That way you don't get a cold solder joint. So we're gonna go ahead and hit all these up. Okay, so we're back now. I think I soldered them all as we go and we clip the leads. I swear it never fails when I try to do this. We send all the kids out and then my wife comes into the kitchen making all the noise in the world. Go ahead and do it, it's fine. So you're gonna hear that going in the background. So let's just mute the audio and cut leads.
all of the resistors are in their hopefully correct and respective places. Maybe we could tidy some of them up. It looks like all of the solder joints have, have turned out quite nicely. I don't see anything wiggling loose on the bottom and that's important because you do not want a cold solder joint. One, when this thing's mounted in the box, you're not gonna be able to look at the bottom and say, oh, there's a cold solder joint, I can see it. So you better check now. Okay, let's go to the next biggest thing. The next biggest thing, fixed inductors. So we have L1, we have El Mes, El Disaster, um, L1, L2, L3. I know L1 is here, L3 is here, and you're looking for the whoop whoop, and there's L2. So we need to make sure that these do go in the right place. So if we orient this according to the picture, and this one is not much different than this one, there's only a few differences between the two, is these guys right here, the DC connector and the antenna connector. It's a two pin plug. Okay, so let's take a look. L1 is on the other side of this one. So let's go with L1 and make sure it looks the same. Well, can't pull that out there. L1 looks to be the same I'm just verifying to make sure with my poor colorblind eyes because they all look black to me. But I'm just looking to see if there is some color and it could be red or brown. So I believe this is L1. And you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna take and these are a little bit more difficult to bend because these are bigger leads on these guys. So this is L1 goes right there. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to bend the lead. You, you. And then L2 is going to be, all right, let me move this off the picture. L2 goes over here. This is L2, most likely right here. And that one has a gold and a silver. So I definitely know that I have that one right, because guess what? Those are colors I can see. So that's gold and silver. All right, so we're gonna bend that lead over. And that is L2. We're gonna put that right there. Bend those leads back so we can solder those in place. That was a bit much of a bend, a little egregious there. Okay, and L3 is your 100 microfarad. That is your output filter right there. Uh, no, it's not. I'm sorry, it's not. Uh, if you look at the schematic, actually the one microfarad is your output. I believe this is called a pie filter. Don't quote me on that. I didn't study RF in college. I just do it for fun and learn what I can when I can. Okay, so this one should look a lot like that guy. And I believe that's it because there's a black one in the middle in color on the edges, whereas the other one, which was 22, had color, color, and then a black. So that's basically... How I, how I separated these guys. I used to have an inductance texture and I don't know what happened to it. Probably got lost in a crappy barn some, or a <laughs> crap pile in a barn. Okay. Got that one in place. Now, let's apply some 6040.
you know, if you're working on projects that needs jumpers, these make pretty good jumper wires if you don't junk them up like I did. This particular kit doesn't have any jumpers that you need because everything is built into what I assume is a multi-layer, uh, I think it's two, a two-layer circuit board. So most of these connections, I believe, are made on the top of the board, and only one of them is made on the bottom that I can see from here. Okay, we have two more things to cut off. We made a circuit board when I was in college once for our little robot guy. So I did programmable electronics in college. Don't want to talk about where I went. It's not the, not really a point. I did it because I need paper to say that I like to do this stuff, not the other way around. I didn't need the paper to, to learn it. All right. There we go, we got that. Now let's see, what are we gonna do next? I think what we're gonna put in next are all of these aggravating guys here. So we have 1.1 microfarad, that's capacitor one. Let's reorient our picture. We're good. Capacitor one, I assume, is up here. So I think everything pretty much starts here and counts this way for the most part. Capacitor one is a 104. Now this, there's no way I can get any closer to that or make that any brighter. And as I'm getting older, it's getting harder and harder to see these numbers. But that is the capacitor right there. And what we're gonna do, there may be too many of these to try to solder all, or, uh, solder all at once. So we'll do a couple at the time. So there's capacitor one. Now two, four, eight, and 11 are a 0 0.01 microfarad. So I have two strips of tape holding these guys down. So let's look for capacitor number two. That was one. There's capacitor two over here next to capacitor five. Let's go put that in. And this is a real, for, for the most part, this is a real time build. I, I, I have already fast forwarded through a couple of sequences where it really wasn't necessary, I guess, to watch me do it in real time. Okay, capacitor four. That was two, but then it jumps to five. Four and three are back here, so there's four. This is capacitor four. And I'm trying to keep them lifted off the board just a little bit, just a little bit to protect the actual ceramics of it. Capacitor eight, where could the magic capacitor eight be? We're looking at the squares now. That's pretty much where the capacitors are. And I found seven and nine, eight, way over here. So we're gonna pull out capacitor number, th well, the third capacitor in that pile. Capacitor eight is chilling right here. Again, trying to protect the very fragile entrance into the capacitor itself and we have one more, capacitor 11, and that one just so happens to be hiding right there. All right, let's go ahead and solder the, these five capacitors in, trim the leads, and then we'll go back and do another set. Let's go to the next set of capacitors now. Starting a nice little collection of leads there. 
Okay. Moving right along to capacitors three and seven. So three is right there. Seven is right there. See, I'm starting to see these things real fast now. C, I <laughs> get it. Okay, C3. Push that in there, bring it up a little bit. Okay, C7. And now let's go C5 and 6. C5 is a 470 picofarad. I've seen these written two ways, 470 and 471. Uh, maybe not 470. Maybe not. I'm thinking of something else. But uh, 471 is capacitor C5, C6. So here's C5. Mm -hmm. Got that one down there. Let's carefully bend one of the legs over. Now the other one, and capacitor six is over here behind the inductor. I do believe that five and six, the 470 picofarads mixed with the one uh, microhenry, that is your filtering for 40 meters. If you were to build a different kit for a different frequency range, that one is going to be different. And some of these other ones will too, but definitely these two plus inductor number two, that is your filtering. All right, let's go to C9 and C10. Those are the last ones. C9 is right here. So we'll put that in C9. And C10. It's gonna be running this way. I believe that I bent that resistor a little bit, got in its way. That is capacitor 10 right there. So now we've done the next height and slightly more aggravating parts the ceramic capacitors. Okay, let's solder all these into place and we'll be one step closer. And I think I've done more talking than you probably will when you go to build this. At this current juncture, we're at about 35 minutes of build time. I think the next thing that we're gonna go with, at this point, things start to get kinda big. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder the audio jacks on next. One of them is for audio. That's this side is your speaker out. There is no volume on this thing. They never sit quite nicely in the box that they create. And this is for your key. This only uses a straight key connection. It does not have a built-in keyer. Now, I'm gonna peel this tape off because here is a little trick. These guys 
tend to want to move, especially that one right now is putting up a fight. So if you can get two things tacked down, this one fits a little more snugly in there, so I'm not going to worry so much about that one. Okay, so let's try this out. I'm going to place this down. This is where helping hands really comes in handy. So the first thing I'm going to do is solder that front pin in. That's the ground, the common, the sleeve. So we're going to go ahead and put a heaping in there. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. I'm pushing down to hold it into place. We're putting a generous amount of solder and letting it get kind of warm. That should hold those in place so I can go ahead and take the tape back off. Don't think I need that anymore for that particular part. The rest of that, the rest of these pins should sit neatly down in there. So let's go solder the rest of them. We have one that, uh-oh, you see, see the mistake that happened there? I do. The leg didn't come through, so we're gonna have to take this one off. And that was the one that wanted to play nice. So if you're desoldering something, you do wanna be careful, but See the mistake? So I need something to gently pry that up. It looks like my finger's gonna work. And let's hope that, that we can get that back in there. So let's clean this up a little bit. There's a blob of solder stuck on it. If you have a desoldering tool solder sucker might work these are some pretty tiny holes but what i'm gonna do since it was just one hole is i'm gonna try to feed that back through the same spot while getting the rest of these to go through okay this could be good this could be bad i'm gonna bend that back just a little bit That's what happens when you get stuff shipped to you. If you don't, if you don't check it, you make mistakes. Okay, that seems to line up okay. So what I'm gonna do is melt the solder on that. And then we're gonna push. There we go. Okay, it's back. Now, if they're this time, let's go ahead and put a tap of solder on that. Once that one's cool, I'll come back and touch that up again. So let's go take care of this one. Now these holes are a little bit larger. There's some more surface area here, so it's gonna take a little bit more solder to get these pieces connected let's go back over here and touch that up since we did have to solder it and then unsolder it and then resolder it back we're going to get some good flow through there okay that one that problem is solved don't know how crucial that connector would have been since that is the audio that could have been a extra ground I, I don't know so there's our audio in place and our keyer if you solder these they're they're going going to get a little bit warm okay next one let's try 
try getting these guys in place. So the crystal goes right here. This is for your crystal. I took these from another circuit board and clean them up. They fit nicely in there, but I want them to look nice. That is easier said than done. Um, we could possibly take one of these and bend it into place. And uh, let's go look at the crystal real quick. I don't want to use the crystal because I don't want to heat it up and cause it to shatter or anything of the such. I think it would be okay, but I just prefer not to chance it. So we're going to take this That should give us a pretty good spacing for those two guys. And now I'm gonna reuse this piece of tape again, just to keep, it's gonna melt the tape as soon as I solder it, but we're gonna use that to kind of keep it put. Let's see if we can get these soldered into place without them falling out. Okay. This is so we can change the frequency in case you get on one and it's already in use. You can go try a different one. Okay, look at there. Let's see if we melted the tape. Nope, doesn't even look like it got warm. Put that back, pull that out, and look. That's in there very neatly. So. If you wanted to, you can go ahead and take your capacitor, or what am I saying? That's not a capacitor. Your crystal, if you want to go ahead and place it in there, check your fit. I might have had it a little bit too far over. Okay, so we'll push that down in there. Bingo. See a problem already. Okay, you see the problem? In the other design, I had it bent over. It was off in the middle of nowhere. This time, it's gonna be touching a diode. So I'm trying to bend this back without damaging it. I mean, who cares if your crystal looks a little crazy? Hopefully all is well. We'll find out when we power this thing up. I've been it all too, heck. Alrighty, let's go look at our diodes. I think we'll do those next. We have diode one, yomp, diode two, yomp. Now these are polarized. Those capacitors that we put in, not polarized. Capacitors, or uh, not capacitor, diodes one and two. Two is right here, one is right here. You have a triangle with a line. So this is your anode on this side, that's the positive side. This is your cathode, that's the negative. So you wanna orient it so that silver line is where it is pointing towards this line right here. So the way this goes, it's gonna go into that hole and then this is going to bend over like so. We'll put that diode in place. And I think I've got enough spring tension on there. That shouldn't really go anywhere. And diode number two. Uh, anode goes towards the bottom. So we're gonna bend that over like so and do the same thing. And that is what I was worried about. See, we don't want the case of that crystal to touch that. I think we're gonna be okay. 
So let's go ahead and get those in place. And let's go get our signal diode. I, I, I want to think that this is, this is what detects your audio. So the frequency that is detected and mixes with the mixer is sent through this bad boy here. And this rectifies it so that you can actually hear it. And it also has a black line. This is diode number three. So we're looking for another one of these guys. There's one, diode two, diode three is this little guy right there. And it goes in just like so. Now, if you noticed, I kind of bent that one a little bit higher. I don't want to break the glass envelope on it. We're gonna place that inside that tight little space right there. Yump. Let's go ahead and solder our diodes in. So that looks like that's going to steer pretty clear of that. Um, what you could do is if you got a pair of pliers, you could always bend these back, straighten them out. I'll probably do that. So I'm going to set that back to the side. Okay. The next thing, let's put in these two capacitors. We have capacitor one. Positive is going to be the square. Negative is going to be in the hashed area. So your anode or the positive is going to go right here. That's capacitor one and your ground goes right there. And these should be okay to push all the way down. We won't need as much friction to hold those into place. And let's go with, hold up, wait a minute. I'm missing some capacitors. Where'd these guys go? How come I only have one? Very interesting. There's supposed to be three of these. I did not catch that. Let's see what we have left over. Three. Don't know how that happened. Okay, let's put these guys in place. These are exactly the same as the other one. You have the positive is the longer lead. So you want to make sure that you put positive in the long lead and the gray area, which is your negative, down there. Let's do it again. Positive is your long lead. Negative is the one with a little gray area. And capacitor four, same deal. Positive, negative. If you put these in backwards, there's a good chance they either one won't work, two will they'll go bang. If they go bang, just solder you another one on top of the leads that are left, I guess. Now we have the capacitors. You can do a double check to make sure you did it right. And you did it right. Okay, now another toughie. You don't want to solder your audio board in, or audio board, who am I kidding? The audio integrated circuit. So we can make it interchangeable, but you still need to follow the picture. And there is a picture. Sometimes there isn't a picture, but there's a different shaped square or pad. 
and this one is square. So we're going to put this in the same way. And uh, should have done this one a few steps back because it's going to try to move on us. So what you can do is you can fold one of the first pins over and then the opposite end last pin over. That should hold it in place well enough. No, not happy with it. Go ahead and do another one to hold all that up. Three points of contact. Still not happy, so that should be good. Let's go ahead and solder those eight pins into place. Well, we got a few pieces left. Let's go ahead and take a look-see at this booger bear right here. I don't particularly like this. I think that one of the other kits that I had, you could actually dial in your zero just a little bit. But maybe this one's just a set it and forget it kind of guy. So we're gonna put this 50,000 ohm resist, uh, variable resistor right there. Looks fantastic. I think we will go ahead and send that one Two transistors. Let's go ahead and hit those up. Now, these are important that you put them in the right place and the right ones in the right place. We have S9018 is Q1. And they have the flat area pointed this way. Now, what I do with most of my transistors is I'll get one in, second lead in, and then the third lead in like this. And then I just push it down. That's usually how I do that. And I let those stand up so they can have a little heat dissipation, a little bit of room. And then we have an 8050 for this particular kit. That is Q2. That guy's over here, Q2. And the same thing, you put the dome, you, you basically fit the shape in the shape. So we've almost got this in there. So you can see it lines up with the shape that they have on the silk screen. We'll push that in, we've got six pins, the solder there. Man, we are almost done. We have six solder points after this left. Instead of, I, I tried to replace it on the other board, tore the circuit to bits and pieces. This is the buzzer. Now on the other one, it had a disconnect built in, a jumper for the buzzer. So you didn't have to hear it if you didn't want to. This kit doesn't have that built in, but you could technically scrape one of these traces, but you do notice there is a positive and a negative. The positive is usually indicated on this piece right here. There is a slightly longer leg or lead on that one. So we're gonna push that down in there. Doesn't wanna fit, cause I think I bent one of the legs on it. Go. Go. All right, so that fit in there nicely. We have four more solder points left and then we have completely assembled the circuit board.
because I want to leave this on there to keep the squeaky down for now till I mess with it and decide if I want it loud or quiet. I guess if I have headphones on, it's just me anyways. Okay, we have two connectors left. And then we'll put the LM386 in there. We have two more. They have these marked with positive and negative. Now, if you forget what positive and negative is, I mean, it's pretty obvious that that sits right there. So we're gonna go back and use this humble piece of tape again. If I can take that off, I may have to go get me a new piece. just have to roll with it I guess we're gonna use that to hold this down so that we can get a piece of solder on it so that's our high-tech hold it in place piece I have two solder joints left and they're the most aggravating ones hopefully I can make this look easy One. Two. And I made a dead gum solder bridge. Well, crap. All right, so the professional way to get a solder bridge taken out. I don't know, maybe just drag that up in between it until it's not a solder bridge anymore. I believe that did it we'll find out in a minute that's the power so <laughs> you might want to make sure that one's not solder bridged or it definitely won't work okay let's use that piece of tape one more time it has definitely served its purpose today I don't know it wouldn't be that I was doing dishes again in another video Okay, let's not solder bridge that again. That was really stupid. Okay, fantastic. Okay, this guy. There's a special way to get these to go in. So it makes me think I've already done it on this one. But usually what you'll do is you'll take your integrated circuit Place it against its legs on a flat surface and slightly bend them towards the center. That may not have been necessary on this particular one. It looked like they were pretty straight. The next thing you want to do, kind of like how I soldered that audio connector in earlier and it had a bent leg. Orientation, orientation, orientation. There is in order to the pins on this thing. You line up the notch with the notch that was on the silk screen and the notch that's in the integrated circuit holder. And then you carefully, with the shakiest hand possible, gently press that in there. The last part of this project is just to put it in some kind of enclosure. And for this one, I chose to use an Altoids tin. I printed some standoffs on my 3D printer with some double-sided sticky tape, drilled the holes and printed a few other things that I needed to make this work because the RF connector, I actually didn't have a nut for it. So I 3D printed one and that's the power input. And you can wire yours up however you want. I didn't even decide to put this on video because I already had most of the holes in this tin. This is a fun little project if you want to learn about some basic transceiver functions and how electronics work and 
There are some inadequacies in the design. I did some research and found that the filter section at the end, the little pie filter, that's only a three pole filter. And it's not quite enough to meet the FCC requirements for noise rejection. And, and so this one, if, if you transmit on like 7.030, it's possible that an RBN could also pick you up on 14.060 on the second harmonic. So there are some conversations on the web about doing five pole or seven pole filters to get that negative 60 decibel re rejection for your harmonics. So there's more to be done to this one. I will test it out and maybe make a contact on it. Who knows? We'll see. I know it's possible. So have fun putting some projects together. I've got some more things coming up. The next video, I'm going to build a 9 to 1 ballon and a random, random wire that's 28 foot long. And we'll see how that works. So we will see you on the next video. This is W1RCP.